What's up gearheads? Toby with GearReport.com. Today we're going to be reviewing the Crimson Trace CTL 5324. Stick around. All right guys, before we jump into the review, let's go over a couple of the administrative items, take a look at some of the features and specifications for the Crimson Trace CTL 5324. The Crimson Trace CTL 5324, pulling the specs and features directly from their website and their documentations, reads pretty straightforward. It's a three to 24 by 56 millimeter with a 34 millimeter tube, first focal plane optic. Uh, it has an, a, uh, a height of roughly 2.4 inches, a length of around 13.9 inches, which is pretty darn compact considering the power that's inside this scope. It has a width of about 3.4 inches, a weight of 34.9 ounces, which is reasonable for the, the amount of weight you're gonna be carrying, a diopter adjustment range of negative three to plus two, a focus range of 20 yards to infinity, an eye relief of 3.5 inches, an effective field of view of 35 feet at 100 yards. That's at the minimum magnification, not the maximum, obviously. It has adjustment graduations, just like you'd expect, of dot one mils or 10 clicks per mil, a full adjust elevation adjustment range of 32 mil, a windage adjustment range of 20 mil, and if you have the illuminated version or the reticle illuminated version, it takes a CR2032 battery. A couple of other little side notes and features of it. It does have an LR1 mil reticle, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about that here in just a few minutes. Um, there's, there's some positives and negatives about that, about that reticle, and so you know, hang around for that. Um, there is a zero reset on the turrets and a zero stop. It does have these very interesting self-leveling scope body indicators. Now, that straight line we'll talk about here in a minute, because it has a huge play into your scope rings as to whether it's actually gonna work the way it's supposed to or not. The illumination, if you have that model, does go all the way up to 11, uh, an, 11 mag, or an 11 times intensity or, or brightness. The lens material is made of a, a Japanese ED glass, and man, just you know, hang in there. We're gonna talk about that glass for sure. The coating on the lens is a fully multi-coated proprietary MOC5 coating. The material for the housing for the, the optic itself is a 6061 T6 aircraft grade aluminum. The finish on the outside is a type three hard anodized. And overall, they do list it as waterproof, shock proof, vibration proof, fog proof, recoil proof, and nitrogen purged for a lifetime of performance. All right, so let's talk about some pros and cons of the, the CTL 5324. Right out of the, the gates, let's talk first about the magnification range that you've got. As you can see, I've added a quick throw lever to be able to quickly adjust and change it out, uh, change between the magnifications. But again, put a pin in that. We're going to talk about that here a little bit more in, the, in a minute. But I do want to talk about the magnification levels themselves. So they start at three, which is a little unusual, and go all the way up to 24. So you know pretty much industry standard on these things. Usually, if it goes all the way up to 24, it's going to start around six. So that's actually a pretty nice touch, uh, I thought, a pretty nice touch. Uh, where that comes into handy is, regardless you know, of whether you're competition shooting or whether you're hunting with this particular optic, it gives you that larger field of view at the lower magnification, which generally hunters definitely, definitely appreciate. Uh, it gives them the full wide field of view to see, you know, to see what they're aiming at. Uh, and then of course it dials all the way out to 24. Now, interesting, interestingly enough, out at 24, it gave me a really quick ability to be able to, to uh, measure distances and to, to calculate you know, how far I was throwing out. And more importantly, out at the maximum magnification, unlike a lot of your cheaper glasses, this Japanese uh, ED style glass or whatever the, the, the title of it is, it gave me the, the full absolute clarity even out to the edges. So you didn't get that fuzzy peripheral around the, the around right around the edges of it. It was clear all the way out to the side. So as far as magnification goes, the fact that it goes down to three and all the way up to 24 and remains clear all the way through its range, uh, along with the fact that this thing is just super butter smooth for that adjustment, you know, I gotta give it kudos for all that for sure. While we're talking about the adjustments, let's talk about the turrets. 
So the turrets are pretty much just an industry standard of dot one mil uh, or 10 clicks to get up to the full mil. But unlike some of the other uh, competitors, each one of the, the stadia or, or uh, incremental dots or incremental marks in between each of the mill adjustments has this very interesting diamond shape where it goes up and then reduces back down. So it's really easy and, and quick to be able to identify whether you're on 0.4 or 0.5. Uh, you just kind of know where you're at based on the, the center line line here that's available to you and the center line line here that's available on the uh, windage as well. Um, the clicks on it, are very smooth, very clean, very crisp, and very tactile. I don't think I can get the sound of it on the camera, but just know that, that you do know exactly what you're clicking. Now, I did test it by dialing it off and dialing it back and dialing it off and dialing it back on both windage and elevation, and it came back to a true zero after every time that I played with the thing or moved it around. It has, just like every other standard optic, it has the ability to lock it down. And it also has a locking key on the inside for the up down once you get your zero, uh, or rather a locking key for once you get your, your, your full, you get it fully zeroed in. Uh, on this side, this turret is actually for the illumination as well as your parallax. The parallax, as we mentioned, goes all the way out to infinity. Um, the the um, illumination, you know, I, I, I used it a couple times in low light of the evening and early morning and it does exactly what you'd expect it to do it illuminates the reticle you know just the right amount as to where you're wanting it um I, i'm not a huge fan of the fact that uh and we'll talk about this when we get to some of the cons not a huge fan or maybe now of the fact that the battery is right up underneath the turret and inside the turret right where that's at but you know that's pretty industry standard and common so i can't exactly fault crimson trace for that it just gives me uh, one of those annoying things that I have to play with when it comes to making sure that my parallax is back on whenever I go to shoot uh, the next time if I have to change out the battery. So as a quick side note, you'll notice that it does have these horizontal lines and I mentioned that when we were talking about the features and specifications. If your particular uh, scope rings have the ability or if this line, this horizontal line matches up with the, the seal in between your upper and lower halves, of your scope rings, that does in fact give you the ability to get to as one more method of being able to level that scope and to get it dead spot on. I wouldn't count on that. I wouldn't lean on it. I wouldn't count it as law. I would still make sure that my bases and my rings were actually leveled before I even tried anything like that. But that gives you a secondary capability to be able to double check and make sure that you are in fact on level. Now in my particular case, using the Wheeler uh, scope mounts and scope rings that I'm using, there's a 45 throw for where the, the upper and lower halves come in and connect to each other. So that line doesn't do me any good. Uh, but for those of you out there who are using your standard scope ring mounts, that's just kind of a nice touch. Uh, I'm going to give it a, a pro for that one, not a con. So another pro on this thing is price point. So Crimson Trace with this particular optic is trying to compete with some of the big boys that are, you know, $1,000 more expensive, easily $1,000 more expensive, and, uh, and still competing on the, the same level of quality capabilities uh, and, you know, just what you're getting bang for your buck, so to speak. As of the authoring of this video, I think you can pick these things up for like fourteen or $1,500 on Amazon, easily $1,000 under some of the competitors and still hangs with them. Now, would I then trust this as, as a go to war and, you know, going to Afghanistan and, and taking it over into the sand to use? Probably not. It probably does, you know, lack some of the things uh, and some of the, the rigidity and, and ruggedness. I don't know that, so don't quote me on that. Uh, but some of the larger competitors. But, you know, I think this, you know, for a competitive shooting or for a uh, hunting application or just for general, general average, average use, man, you cannot go wrong with spending that amount of money on this, on this optic, you know, and then you bolt on the fact that, that it has a first focal plane as opposed to, as opposed to a second focal plane. My goodness, man, that, that just absolutely brings it on par with a, a bunch of the other companies and maybe even surpasses a lot of them as far as quality and, and ability. Uh, and again, as I mentioned, that overall small length of package, man, that's just tight and sexy. All right, so let's talk real quick, you know, about the, the, the pros and cons of the reticle. So that reticle is both a pro and it's gonna lead me into a con at the same time and some of, where we talk about some of the cons. The pro of it is, you know, obviously this thing has extremely quick uh, acquisition of follow-up shots. So the way that the Christmas tree's laid out, 
you know, the standard gradients that has, you know, uh, well, for starters, let's back up and talk about the fact that it has standard gradients. So, for example, uh, the, the dots in it are the 0.2 mils. Uh, the, you know, it's got the half mil increments, full mil increments, and so on. So, for ranging uh, and quick target acquisition that way, uh, it's pretty much industry standard. There's nothing crazy or wild about it. Um, but, but more importantly, that Christmas tree style uh, optic gives you the ability to, to take your follow-up shots really, really quickly and really, really easily to find out where they're at and either change your hold uh, or just quickly adjust the turrets, whatever it is you're trying to do. It, with this particular rifle, with the DSP Armory Titan, uh, this muzzle brake on this beast combined with the weight of the rifle and the stable platform I had it on, I was able to, most shots, as long as I didn't have it dialed in to too high of a magnification, I was able to see, easily see where I was impacting, you know, register it on the tree and then adjust my shot quickly without adjusting, you know, magnification, without doing anything, just standard holdover, not even moving my turrets. Now, I do want to point out, though, that that, that reticle does lead me to one negative. So the, the negative and, and leading us into some of the cons on this, and again, now I want to be clear, this con is just me and the way that I shoot and the way that my old man eyes work. Your mileage may vary on this. So when I say this, take this with a grain of salt and you yourself do your own research or go and pick up one of these things and look through it. But what, what I found with my eyes and the way that I shoot is that very center actual point of impact for wherever it is that I had the zero, that this, this zeroed in at, which is 100 yards in this case, it was so small because it was just like the other dots in line, that 0.2 mils, it was so small that my eye took an extra millisecond or an extra half a second or so to pick it up and register that that was in fact the center point of the reticle and where my point of aim and hopefully point of impact was going to be at 100 yards uh, and then to be able to adjust off of that. So my eye had the fact that the dot didn't differentiate in size any bigger or, or even smaller than the dots around it gave my eye a little bit more time to pick up that center every single time because I had to register, yes, this dot is the center versus the dots around it. Now, again, for, it wasn't you know, a deal breaker by any stretch of imagination, but it did, did cause me to have to take an extra split second every time to be able to register that. On right, another con, is, as I mentioned just a minute ago, is the rigidity of it. Now, I, I, I can't say that this is a true actual con. This is one of those where I kind of have to leave it open-ended for those of you consumers out there and review uh, people who are watching this review. I don't know if this, as I mentioned, would hold up to wartime or actual, you know, full combat type standards. Uh, I know that it's shockproof and, you know, breakproof and et cetera, et cetera, but I, I haven't run it in such a way that I can fully, fully endorse it for that type of application versus competition shooting and uh, your, just your average hunting. Now, with that said, uh, that is not truly, truly a con. Again, not a knock on Crimson Trace. That's more the fact that I, as a reviewer, weren't able to give it the run for its money that it truly deserved and needed. That said, though, again, I did take this through a full sniper course out at Tactical Response in Camden, Tennessee, and it was a more of a martial style class, among the other things I did with it, carrying it through the woods hunting and so on and so forth. But during that class, I did, you know, it did get banged on trees. It was slung over my back and on my front, you know, bouncing around and banging on things. Uh, I did drop it and throw it down on the ground a couple times, literally just tossed it down on the ground um, from my standard average height. So I did put it through, you know, your, more than what your average user is going to put this rifle through, much more than what your average user is going to put this rifle through, or this scope through. But I didn't put it through what somebody out in the sand is going to be putting it through or one of our, our brothers and sisters in the military. So I have to kind of put that as a con uh, just because I can't give you your full a full estimation of what, what its ability is compared to some of the, the higher end and more expensive scopes. Uh, which this is directly in competition with. Another con, again, I had mentioned this throw lever. So at the price point that they're charging for this thing, it would it's not required by any stretch of the imagination for changing that changing that magnification level. The, the magnification dial is very, very tactile. It's very chunky and beefy and meaty, and you can quickly grab it. It doesn't matter whether you're wearing gloves or whether you're barehanded or whatever. 
But since one of the main features for the, the Crimson Trace CTL 5324 is that you're wanting it to be able to be used for competitions, I really think it would have been nice if Crimson Trace put an integrated throw lever that maybe may folded forward or back or something like that instead of you having to buy this big goofy chunky one that's just always sticking up, uh, which again, this is a Crimson Trace product. Uh, but it'd be nice if I had one, and that's just an aesthetic, it's just a nice to have. I won't call it a true con, but it, it's just one of those that, that popped into my mind when I was using it. So, all that said, bottom line is, would I spend my money on it, and would I trust my life to it? Yeah, I'd, I'd spend my money on it, absolutely, positively, for sure. Uh, again, as I've mentioned multiple times through this review, this bad boy has features of some of the more expensive, beefier, and heavy duty scopes in a much cheaper price package. So if you're looking for a competition ready, hunting ready, mill radian based scope, you can't go wrong at this price point. It could end up saving yourself a thousand dollars. So yes, I would definitely spend my money on this. Full disclosure, obviously Crimson Trace sent me this one for free to review, but I would spend my money if I were looking for an optic in this category. Would I trust my life to it? Well, I can't give you that answer just yet. Um, I would say that as it sits now, in combination with my DSP Armory Titan 308 uh, and the Marshall course I've put it through with Sniper, using it at the Sniper course in Camden, Tennessee, as well as the shooting I've done around here, the hunting I've done with it, I can say at this moment in time, I'm confident that yes, I could probably trust my life to it uh, for just your average, average use or average you know, God forbid, zombie apocalypse kind of scenario or whatever. Um, that said though, again, as I mentioned in the con and as I mentioned in, in some of the, the facts about it, I haven't given it that true, you know, more than say two, three thousand dollar or two, three thousand shots uh, testing. I haven't given it that true drop test from 10, 15, 20 feet up to see what's going to happen. I haven't given it that level of testing to where I can testify to, to, you know, being able to truly, truly, truly trust your life to this thing. But just for your average Joe citizen like myself, who's just using it for home defense, plinking, competition, hunting, that kind of thing, sure. I mean, you could probably qualify this as something you could count your life on. So hopefully some of this information has been helpful for you if you're trying to decide and you're on the fence about buying the Crimson Trace CTL 5324. Until we see you out on the range, you keep living your dream.